We will begin this example by opening a data table which exists in an Excel file. As you evaluate the preview of this example in the Excel import dialog, note that the data table contains longitude and latitude columns. The values in these columns will be used to determine the position of this data on the map. After clicking OK, we are presented with the default visualization type and can change this to a map chart visualization. We can immediately see markers positioned according to the longitude and latitude coordinates provided in our data table, and we can adjust the properties of the visualization. For example, we could configure the color by variable to represent the conversion type data column, hide the legend, and close the filters and details on demand panels. Here, the Layers menu will show that the map chart is currently comprised of two layers. One layer represents the data we imported from the Excel file, and the other represents a map layer. If we wanted to make changes to either layer, we can go to the Properties gear icon, and the resulting drop-down list will show the available layers, as well as the properties for the map chart visualization. If we select My Global Data Settings, we can go to the Size section and remove Row Count as a variable and slightly decrease the marker size. In the Labels section, we could label by city, showing labels for only the marked rows. And in the Tooltip section, we could uncheck All and add Country without the value name displayed. Let's say we are interested in examining data in and around Amsterdam. We can use the navigation bar to zoom in, but note that we cannot currently drag to reposition because the map is currently in marking mode. If we switch the interaction control to panning mode, we can drag the map to the desired position and continue zooming. Note that as we continue to zoom in, different levels of information become available on the map layer, such as roads and labels. If we find that the map layer is too distracting, we can go to the Properties drop-down menu and select the Map Layer Settings. The default selected map type is the standard map. We could select a light version of this map or select only a basic map. If we close the settings dialog for this layer, we could return to the properties drop down menu with the goal of adding layers. To do so, we will launch the properties dialog and select the layers section. Here we can add another map layer and select borders. Let's add another map layer and select roads. Then add a final map layer which will display labels. There are two reasons for adding these as separate layers. First, zoom visibility can now be controlled separately for each layer. In this section of the Properties dialog, you can determine the zoom levels at which each of the layers will appear and disappear. We could set our data to appear only after a small degree of zooming is initiated, while roads will require a much greater zoom level. Labels can appear at a high level of zoom, however, let's prevent them from crowding the view at very high zoom levels. We'll set borders to appear at this level, and leave the basic layer visible at all zoom levels. Now, as we incrementally zoom in towards Amsterdam city center, it is not until we reach a specific zoom level that roads will appear on the map. The second reason for adding these map components as separate layers is that you may easily uncheck the roads layer at any time here under the visible columns in the layers menu and hide that layer from the map. Even as we continue to zoom in, the roads layer will remain hidden until we decide to turn it on again. Let's return to the Properties dialog, Layers section, and under the Add button, you will find that in addition to the various map layers, you can also add marker layers, feature layers, and image layers. In fact, we already have a marker layer, represented by the data table open from Excel. We'll add another marker layer from data supplied by Spotfire. You can see that the available map data provided within the Spotfire library is organized by continent or country and may include provinces, states, territories, postcode, and city information. We will choose world cities to be added to our map chart and adjust the settings for these markers to be colored black. Size should not represent any variable, so we will just remove it. Slide the marker size slightly to the left and set the shape to be hollow circles. When we click Close and click Close, you can see the world cities have been added to the map chart and that the addition of this new layer caused the map zoom to be reset. Let's zoom in to India and view the Details on Demand panel, positioning it along the bottom of the page. If we wish to mark data in southern India, we need to switch the interaction mode from panning mode to marking mode. And once we have dragged a rectangle around the area of interest, Note that the marked data reflects only the data we imported from Excel, not the World Cities data. 
This is because only one layer can be set to interact via marking at any one point in time. Here in the Layers menu, we can change the marking layer to be World Cities. And when the interaction mode for this layer is set to marking, we can obtain detailed information from the World Cities data table supplied by Spotfire, as opposed to the data table we initially imported from Excel. Let's close the Details on Demand panel and add another layer to this map chart by going to the Properties dialog, Layers section, and adding a Feature layer. Again, we will use data which is supplied via the Spotfire library and select USA States to be added as a layer. Since this layer will present the shape of each state, we'll adjust the settings in the Appearance section so that the layer is about halfway transparent, and we will change the color settings so that each state is colored categorically by state name. We'll close that settings dialog, and in the Map Chart Properties dialog, we will change the Zoom Visibility section to show the USA states at the fourth zoom level and World Cities at the sixth zoom level. After closing the Properties dialog, we can zoom in towards the United States. Note that if a rectangle results when you are trying to drag the map, you must still be in marking mode. Switch back to panning mode, and as you continue to zoom, you will note that the USA State's Shape Feature layer is displayed at higher zoom levels than the World City's Marker layer. Let's say we have additional detailed data to display in California. That data is provided in two formats. We have a data source which contains specific information for data collected around Bakersfield, California, and we have an Esri shape file which maps the shape of specifically defined territories for our business. Let's add both of these as new data tables to this analysis document. After selecting the Bakersfield data file and the shape file which represents our territory map, we can click OK and click OK, and a new page with a default visualization will be presented. We'll delete this page and return our attention to the map chart we've been building. We wish to use these new tables as the sources for adding new layers to the map chart, so we will return to the Properties dialog, Layers section. We'll add a marker layer and select Bakersfield data, and in the resulting Settings dialog, we will change the color of markers to green, change the size by property to remove the selected column, as well as decrease the marker size slightly, and change the shape to diamonds. After closing this settings dialog, we can add a feature layer based on the territories shapefile we added to the analysis as a data table. In the resulting settings dialog, in the appearance section, we will adjust the layer transparency to about halfway and change the polygon border color to black. After closing this settings dialog, we can visit the zoom visibility section of the properties dialog and select the desired zoom level for the Bakersfield data and the territory map. Now, as we zoom in once again, headed towards the U.S. state of California, we will see our initial data appear, followed by the state's feature layer and world cities. Further zooming reveals the Bakersfield data as green diamonds, and ultimately, the shapes of our territories defined in Kern County. And again, if we view the Details on Demand window, we can select the layer we wish to mark, like the Bakersfield data layer, and switch the interactive mode from panning mode to marking mode. Upon marking, the data supporting the marked green diamonds will populate the Details on Demand panel. If we wanted to drill down into the shapefile data table which supports the territory map layer, we could change the marking layer in the Layers menu, ensure that we are in marking mode, and mark several territories while holding the Control key. Let's close the Details on Demand window and add one more layer to this map chart. This layer will be based upon an image. This image was created outside of Spotfire and reflects a regional division of the state of California as defined by our sales organization. In order to add this image as a layer in our map chart, we can return to the Properties dialog, Layers section, and add an image layer. We will browse to the location of the PNG file titled MyRegions.png and click Open. After this image is selected, we need to click on the Extent Settings button in order to indicate where on the map the image should appear. These values define the X and Y coordinates on the map which determine the position and size of the image. You can adjust these values through a process of trial and error until your image appears at the appropriate size and in the appropriate location within your map coordinate system. That trial and error process has already been conducted and these values are appropriate for the current scenario. When we click OK and click Close, we can adjust the zoom visibility settings for the image layer, the Bakersfield data, World Cities, and our territory's shapefile.
After closing the properties dialog, we can zoom out until we can see the entire state of California and uncheck the USA States layer from the Layers menu in order to appreciate the impact of the addition of this image as a layer. In closing, remember that you can control which layers are visible and which layer will be marked in the Layers menu. For additional configuration control, the settings for any of the layers we have added as map layers, marker layers, feature layers, or image layers can be accessed directly, or we can add layers and adjust overarching features of existing layers within the Map Chart Properties dialog.